The Dragon's Fury is easily my favorite weapon in all of TF2. Not only that, but I truly believe that the Dragon's Fury is Pyro's best flamethrower. The amount of damage that this thing can dish out can only be described as devastating. That might come as a surprise to some of you. On paper, the damage output of the Dragon's Fury seems average at best. The initial shot deals a paltry 30 damage, while any hit on a burning enemy, which I'll refer to as the combo hit, deals up to 90 damage. For reference, that's the same max damage that the stock shotgun can deal. But when you consider that the Dragon's Fury, unlike the shotgun, doesn't have its damage reduced by bullet spread, never needs to reload, can penetrate multiple enemies, and has an insanely fast firing rate, it's easy to see how this weapon can reach dizzying levels of damage. The Dragon's Fury can wipe an entire team single-handedly if used correctly. That's the catch though. This weapon is really, really hard to use. Not only because those combo hits require an insane level of precision, but also because the Dragon's Fury requires a completely different playstyle from any other flamethrower. It can excel in matchups that the other flamethrowers struggle in, and vice versa. So as someone that's almost exclusively used the Dragon's Fury for over a year now, I figure I should share what I've learned about the weapon and how it's best used. This is how to fight every class with the Dragon's Fury. And win. Before that though, two quick disclaimers. First, yes, this video is heavily inspired by the Uncle Dane video under a similar name. If you somehow haven't watched his video yet, I encourage you to do so. Second, the tips and strategies that I share in this video won't help you if you can't aim with the Dragon's Fury in the first place. There are tons of resources available for improving your aim, but for the Dragon's Fury specifically, my main advice is to realize that despite how fast the projectile is, it's still just that, a projectile. So beyond point-blank range, you'll need to lead your shots a little bit. It'll take some time to get the muscle memory down, but I promise that you'll improve as long as you keep practicing. Alright, let's get into the matchups, starting with... Scout, initially, may seem like a pretty simple matchup for the Dragon's Fury. Both of you are capable of two-shotting each other, so just land your hits before he does. But therein lies the problem, landing your hits. Between Scout's speed, double jump, and small hitbox, landing that combo hit versus a competent Scout can be incredibly hard. Hitting them boils down to having good aim. At close range, the Dragon's Fury can be treated like a hit-scan weapon, meaning you can click any time the Scout enters your crosshair. But beyond that distance, you'll need to lead your shots. If you have the Scorch Shot equipped, this is one of the best matchups to use it in. The Bread and Butter Scorch Shot Dragon's Fury combo is great at melting light classes. Just hit the Scout with your Scorch Shot to stunlock them, then switch to your Dragon's Fury and fire before he can move again. However, this combo doesn't actually two-shot light classes. It leaves them with about 15 health. This is also true for the Dragon's Fury itself at longer ranges. For any other light class, this isn't a big deal. You can ignore them and leave them to die to afterburn, or even air blast them into the air to remove any chance of them extinguishing themselves. But for Scout, even if he's two seconds away from death, he can use his mobility to escape to a health pack run out of your range and extinguish himself with Mad Milk, or even run in and meat shot you for a double down. This is where the panic attack shines as a secondary to the Dragon's Fury. Based on what I've seen from online discussions, most people seem to think that shotguns have poor synergy with the Dragon's Fury, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The panic attack in particular is great at patching up some of the Dragon's Fury's biggest weaknesses. Switching to the panic attack and firing is noticeably faster than keeping the Dragon's Fury out for a subsequent shot, meaning you can use it to kill scouts on low health before they escape or kill you. The panic attack's widespread also basically guarantees that you'll get off at least some damage. Having the panic attack as a backup is also great for if you miss with the Dragon's Fury. You can switch to the panic attack, fire a shot, 
and switch back to the Dragon's Fury just in time for it to be ready to fire again. And if you turn the corner only to find a scout shooting you in the face, remember that you can use your air blast to knock them away and retreat back to safety. Soldier is the first of many classes where the matchup with the Dragon's Fury is radically different than with the stock flamethrower. I'll start by addressing the elephant in the room. The Dragon's Fury's air blast sucks. Being unable to fire with your primary weapon for one and a half seconds makes you a sitting duck, and experienced players will be more than happy to exploit that. That's not to say that you should avoid air blasting, you just need to be more thoughtful about when you air blast. Luckily for you, I've already done that thinking and have come up with four general situations where you should use air blast in a fight. One, to reflect a projectile that would otherwise kill you. Two, when you know that a reflected projectile would be enough to kill your opponent. Three, if you're surrounded by your team or can fall back behind cover immediately after air blasting. And four, if you think you're about to die regardless of what you do, so why the hell not? When it comes to fighting a soldier one-on-one, -on -one, it's that second option that you need to keep in mind. If you're relying solely on the Dragon's Fury, then you'll need to land at least three shots, with all but the first requiring precise aim. Conversely, all the soldier needs to do is to click at the general area of your feet twice. The ability to air blast is the wild card that you can use to turn a fight around. Reflected rockets can deal well over 100 damage, meaning you can kill a soldier with one after landing two Dragon's Fury shots on them. If you fail to kill the soldier, however, you'll have given him one and a half seconds to fight you without your primary. This is another situation where having a shotgun is incredibly useful, especially the panic attack. In the time it takes the Dragon's Fury to recharge after air blasting, you can switch to the panic attack, fire two shots, and switch back to the Dragon's Fury. Even the reserve shooter is useful for mini critting soldiers that you've popped into the air with their own rocket. If you're using the Scorch Shot or the Detonator, you should still switch to those after air blasting since there's really no reason not to. But unless you're at a major health advantage, you're better off retreating which can be made easier by jumping as the soldier shoots at your feet to surf away to safety. Of course, you don't need air blasts to beat soldiers. Three Dragon's Fury shots can deplete their health before they even have a chance to react. Scorch shot combos are once again excellent for making your shots as easy to land as theirs. Due to the soldier's high health, you'll want to aim for their feet after hitting them with the Scorch shot to keep them in the air for longer a combo that I covered in a previous video. If you have trouble pulling this off, you can also hit them with the Dragon's Fury first and then use your Scorch Shot to pop them high into the air. Lastly, although not super useful in direct combat, the Detonator is great at punishing soldiers that stick to the high ground in an attempt to stay out of your range. Irritate them enough and they'll rocket jump straight towards you, only to be met with several Dragon's Fury shots to the face. Pyro, like Scout, is another matchup that seems simple at first. You both have flamethrowers, but yours has greater range and deals more damage, so a Dragon's Fury Pyro should always beat a stock Pyro, right? That might be true against newer Pyros, but fighting a good Pyro with a Dragon's Fury is a hellish experience for one reason and one reason only. Air Blast. Hold on. The Dragon's Fury is literally the fastest projectile in the game. How can a Pyro possibly react to it? That's the thing, they don't. When you hit a player with that initial Dragon's Fury shot, it deals a pathetic 30 damage. You can think of landing this initial shot as the admission fee that you need to pay to achieve the actual high damage of the weapon. Every class other than Pyro stays ignited for 3 seconds afterwards, giving you a reasonable window to line up your combo hits. But hitting a pyro with this initial shot only ignites them for a single second, meaning you only have that second to follow up. So if the opposing pyro simply reacts to getting hit by that initial shot by holding down air blast, they leave you with only a fraction of a second to land your combo hit and deal any meaningful damage. 
Otherwise, they'll reflect your projectile right back at you. And you do not want to get hit by your own reflected Dragon's Fury shot. Ordinarily, it'll only do up to 40 damage, but if you happen to be in contact with their flames at the same time, they'll hit you with their own mini crit boosted combo hit, which deals up to 121 damage. Long story short, getting through an air blast spamming pyro can be incredibly frustrating, but not impossible. The single most important thing to do in this matchup, above all else, is to stay out of their flamethrower's range. This forces the pyro to choose between keeping their flamethrower out, dealing no damage to you and relying entirely on air blast, or switching to their secondary, at which point you can easily take them out in three shots. Should they keep their flamethrower out, it's then a matter of mixing up the timing of your shots and capitalizing when they mistime their air blast. As soon as a pyro uses their air blast, they'll need to wait another 0.75 seconds to air blast again, giving you just enough time to get two Dragon's Fury shots in. As you might imagine, needing to play around the opposing pyro's air blast can make fighting them take several seconds, so if they're being healed by a medic or have teammates backing them up, you probably aren't winning with the Dragon's Fury alone. This is yet another matchup where having a shotgun is extremely helpful. The panic attack can be used to finish off pyros after landing a combo hit, but the stock shotgun is even better in this matchup for its superior mid-range capabilities. If you happen to have a man melter crit stored, you can two-shot a pyro with that followed up by a dragon's fury shot. Though the man melter's faster projectile speed ironically hurts you here by making the window you have to pull this off smaller than with other flare guns. Even if you're not using it offensively though, the Man Melter is still great for extinguishing multiple teammates in rapid succession, which is something that the Dragon's Fury can't do. And when it comes to fighting opposing Dragon's Fury pyros, it really just comes down to who has the better aim. Though now that you've watched this video, you know you can abuse your own air blast to escape if you're about to lose the fight. Demoman is, thankfully, a pretty straightforward class to fight with the Dragon's Fury. Though you can't wall him out with Air Blast like with Stock, the Dragon's Fury's increased range lets you actually pose a threat to him at mid-range, which is the range that Demo typically prefers to fight at. However, aiming with the Dragon's Fury can feel inconsistent when using it at its maximum range, since even small deviations in your target's movement can make you miss your combo hits. So only fight a demo at this range if he's distracted, or you're confident in your own aiming abilities. If you want a way to close that gap between yourself and the enemy demo, look no further than the detonator. Detonator jumping towards a demo allows you to fight him at close range, where sticky spamming stops being effective. The only way a demo can kill you at this range, other than with melee of course, is to hit you with two pipes which means that any health you lost from detonator jumping is irrelevant so long as you stay above 100 health. The detonator even comes with the bonus of being able to remove stickies, which the Scorch Shot can also do. The same four rules for air blasting against soldiers applies here as well, though trying to deal damage via Reflex is much less reliable since reflected pills are hard to land and reflected stickies require the demo to detonate them on himself so I pretty much only use Air Blast defensively in this matchup. That's pretty much it for Demo Man, but as for Demo Knight, they can actually give the Dragon's Fury a hard time if you aren't careful. The shields all have fire resistances, meaning you'll need to land even more of your combo hits to take a Demo Knight out, especially the Charge and Targe, which has a whopping 50% fire resistance. The Dragon's Fury's slow air blast also makes it difficult to stop a Demonite from getting in your face, though you do have other methods of juggling people into the air. Like I mentioned with Soldier, hitting someone with a Scorch Shot and following up with a Dragon's Fury Shot can pop them into the air if you do it as quickly as possible. Even if you don't have the Scorch Shot equipped, you can still pop Demonites up by shooting at their legs with your combo hits. I usually don't make a conscious effort to hit people in the legs without some sort of prior knockback, since hitting people at all is hard enough, but the fact that Demonites tend to run towards you in a straight line with no way to throw off your aim makes doing it versus them pretty easy. The only issue with juggling Demonites is that it can take several shots to actually kill them, 
giving them time to escape, either by surfing the damage or charging. Because of this, shotguns are another solid option for dealing with demonites. Hopefully by this point, I've convinced you that running a shotgun with the Dragon's Fury is useful in a lot of situations. You wouldn't be gimping yourself by equipping one just to deal with a demonite. Heavy is by far my favorite class to fight using the Dragon's Fury. Like, sometimes I feel the need to apologize to heavy players on the other team because I go out of my way to fight them. And most of the time, I end up winning. Heavy's slow speed and large hitbox makes him the easiest class to land combo hits against. Now, even if you're landing every combo hit, the Dragon's Fury's maximum DPS simply can't compete with that of the stock minigun. So how do I still manage to kill heavies one-on-one? -on -one? It's simple. By getting right in the heavy's face, it becomes incredibly hard for him to track my movement and hit me, all while I'm holding down mouse one and melting his health down to zero. It's really that easy. Even a heavy with a pocket medic can be taken out by a single Dragon's Fury Pyro. The heavy isn't gonna let you get in his face for free, of course. If he's already revved up and looking in your direction, don't bother trying. But even in that case, you can still kill the heavy by corner peeking, barraging him with 80 damage shots while he can only land a few bullets on you at a time. Most of the time, you should only need the Dragon's Fury to kill a heavy, but the panic attack is notable for letting you do so even faster. In fact, the panic attack is what allows a Dragon's Fury Pyro to actually beat a heavy in a pure 1v1 scenario, which just goes to show how saving even a fraction of a second can mean the difference between dying or not. For the three people that actually use the Thermal Thruster, an unsuspecting heavy is probably the easiest thing in the game to stomp. And the damage from that stomp, combined with the Dragon's Fury, is one of the fastest ways to kill a heavy outside of backstabs, headshots, or crits. Note, however, that I said an unsuspecting heavy. If a heavy sees or hears you coming and starts firing at you, they can literally pin you against the skybox due to the jetpack's hidden increased knockback penalty. I wish I had more to say about fighting heavies, because it's insane how drastically the Dragon's Fury changes this matchup for Pyro. But it's really just as simple as WM1. Heavy may be my favorite class to fight with the Dragon's Fury, but Engineer is definitely a close second. He's a light class with an average run speed and average damage output meaning you can delete him in just one second with either two Dragon's Fury shots or a Squirt Shot combo. Of course, it's usually not the Engineer himself that you need to worry about, but his buildings. And it's here that the Dragon's Fury excels. I unironically believe that the Dragon's Fury is one of the best anti-sentry weapons in the game. Some of the time, at least. Each shot from the Dragon's Fury deals exactly 75 damage to buildings, letting you destroy level 1 buildings with 2 shots, and level 2 or 3 buildings with 3 shots. Like with fighting heavies, the Dragon's Fury allows Pyro to corner peak sentries and destroy them without taking any damage. An underappreciated aspect of fighting sentries using the Dragon's Fury is that the projectile penetrates buildings. This means that you can hit an engineer that's hiding behind his sentry to repair it, which is something that the typical anti-sentry weapon, the direct hit, can't do. The main issue with fighting sentries is the Dragon's Fury's limited range. If it's out of your reach, then there's not much you can do. If it happens to be a level 3, then you can reflect its rockets back at it. It takes two reflected rockets to destroy a sentry that isn't being healed. And if it is being healed, you can kill the engineer repairing it with a single reflected rocket. The Dragon's Fury's air blast penalty doesn't actually matter here since level 3 sentries fire rockets at intervals greater than 1.5 seconds. If you have the Scorch Shot equipped, it can be surprisingly effective at whittling down sentries from a distance, but only if there's no one there to heal it. As for mini sentries, they, like level 1 sentries, take 2 shots to be destroyed. If the mini is still being built, however, you can destroy it with just one shot so long as it's not more than halfway through its construction. Fighting a Gunslinger Engineer can be a little tougher since their extra health lets them live two shots, so just be prepared to finish them off with a third shot or the Panic Attack.
Funnily enough, medics used to be able to completely counter the dragon's fury with their needle guns due to a bug. But now that that's been fixed, the dragon's fury is a surprisingly effective medic killer. Generally speaking, there are two situations where you'll encounter the enemy medic as a pyro. When the medic's pockets have died and he's left to fend for himself, or when you're ambushing the enemy team to kill the medic at the risk of your own life. In the former case, a medic that's by himself isn't always a free kill. Sure, if they're running away in a straight line, all he needs to do is hit them with three shots. But experienced medic mains can be really good at making their movement hard to predict. Which makes sense given that they're the number one target in any match. When fighting these medics, you can use detonator jumps to prevent them from running away, scorch shot combos to rob them of their ability to juke, or the panic attack to keep up the damage output between any missed Dragon's Fury shots. If you're really having trouble hitting them, you can air blast them into the air to then follow up with a scorch shot combo. But this takes much longer to pull off, so only do this if you know you have the time for it. Make sure you also keep an eye on what weapon they have equipped. If they switch to their melee, you need to immediately step back, otherwise you're going to take a random crit to the face. Once you do step back, the medic will generously walk at you in a straight line as he misses with his melee, making it much easier for you to land the killing blow. As for taking out medics that actually have a team surrounding them, the thermal thruster is an excellent option. Not only does its mobility allow you to come in at any time from a wide range of angles, but the knockback that landing next to someone causes is usually just enough to connect three Dragon's Fury shots before they land, which is all you need to kill a medic. The knockback from the jetpack is more like air blast than the scorch shot. It varies depending on the momentum of yourself and your target. Use the jetpack enough and you'll start to get a feel for how people will get knocked back before you land next to them, which will let you pick off specific targets before they can even react. Even without the jetpack, the Dragon's Fury is still great at picking off medics due to its projectile penetrating players, meaning that the medic's pocket can't body block for them like they would against other classes. The fact that the Dragon's Fury can maintain its high DPS without ever needing to reload also means that you actually have a chance at killing the medic's pocket by yourself, though it should be noted that enemies getting healed only stay ignited for one second, so your aim will need to be on point. When it comes to denying Ubers, the Dragon's Fury is absolutely worse than stock due to its slow air blast. However, having any air blast at all is useful for slowing down an Uber that would otherwise steamroll through you and your team. If you have the Scorch Shot equipped, you can use it in tandem with the Dragon's Fury's air blast to slow Ubers down even further, since for whatever reason the Scorch Shot's knockback applies to Ubered players. The knockback from landing next to someone with the Thermal Thruster also applies to Uber players, which, when combined with Air Blast, can launch the Medic or their Pocket high into the air to waste most, if not all, of their Uber. Sniper vs Pyro might just be the most polarizing matchup in the entire game. Either class is capable of effortlessly destroying the other, depending on one factor how far apart they are. If the enemy sniper has his sights on you from across the map, the Dragon's Fury obviously won't help much. When crossing sniper sightlines, you can harass him with flares or hit him with your shotgun to throw off his aim. As tempting as it may be, do not use your power jack to cross a sightline unless you're already at low health. The power jack's damage vulnerability will make you die from a quickscope headshot or fully charged body shot that you'd otherwise live. If the map you're playing on is wide open or has flank routes, then the detonator and thermal thruster especially are great options for closing the gap between yourself and the enemy sniper. As you close that gap, what you do next will depend on whether the sniper is aware of you or not. If he's scoped in and oblivious to the world around him, he's as free of a kill as you can possibly get. Just two-shot him with the Dragon's Fury. Or if you're feeling spicy, Aim your combo hit at his legs to pop him into the air to then finish him off with the power jack for a free 25 health. If the sniper is aware of you, he'll either run away or try to take you out with a quickscope headshot followed by a body shot or SMG. Snipers that run away aren't much of an issue so long as you have the power jack or the detonator. 
If the sniper is going for a headshot, however, do not use the power jack for the same reasons mentioned earlier. Throw off his aim with your secondary until you have him within your Dragon's Fury's range, at which point he's as good as dead. So, as you can see, the only issue with fighting snipers is closing that gap. Once you do that, all it takes to kill them is two Dragon's Fury shots. Oh, right. So the Darwin's Danger Shield completely counters the Dragon's Fury, and I hate it. Not only does it have the same 50% fire resistance that the Charge and Targe has, but it also grants immunity to Afterburn, meaning you can never get the combo hits that actually deal meaningful damage. Well, you can technically get combo hits under very specific circumstances, but even then they do so little damage that it's not worth trying to execute. So what can you do versus Danger Shield snipers? Your options are pretty limited. You can kill them with two melee hits, which can be made easier by air blessing them into a corner first. But you of course need to be wary of the sniper taking out his own melee and random critting you. And even if the sniper is oblivious to you, he can get bailed out by his team since a pyro with his melee out is an easy target. If you're using the thermal thruster, you can kill them with a stomp followed by a melee swing, which, if timed right, can actually kill them as fast as a backstab. Other than that, your only chance of killing a Danger Shield Sniper is by using a shotgun. Again, shotguns do work well with the Dragon's Fury, but this is pretty much the only case where you'd equip one out of necessity rather than for synergistic reasons. People often say that a major downside of the Dragon's Fury is its reduced ability to spy check. And while that is true, the Dragon's Fury is still one of the best spy checking tools in the game. It may not be able to compete with the other flamethrowers, but come on, those were practically made to screw spies over. Hitting a disguised spy with the Dragon's Fury still lights them on fire. Shooting your teammates doesn't make you waste ammo in your clip that you'd need to reload, and the projectile passing through players lets you check multiple teammates at once. Really, the only issue is that the Dragon's Fury can't sweep large areas for cloaked spies like the other flamethrowers can, which is definitely something to consider, but you can at the very least shoot at corners and other common hiding spots anytime you're not actively fighting someone. When it comes to actually fighting spies, there's really not much to it other than two-shotting them with the Dragon's Fury. Like with any other light class, a Scorch Shot followed by the Dragon's Fury can quickly kill spies, which has the added bonus of stunlocking them to prevent a suicidal backstab on their part. So, as you can see, once you've tracked a spy down, they're practically a free... kill. Oh, for the love of... The Spicicle, like the Danger Shield, is another weapon that grants free afterburn immunity, meaning that you're once again denied of your heavy-hitting combo shots. Thankfully, the Spicicle doesn't grant a fire resistance on top of that, so your Dragon's Fury shots will still deal up to 30 damage. Either take him out with 4 or 5 Dragon's Fury shots, air blast him into a corner and use your melee, or switch to a shotgun if you happen to have one equipped. Alright, that covers everyone. And aside from a few very specific counters, the Dragon's Fury allows Pyro to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other class so long as you have good aim, which is why I believe it's Pyro's best primary. The only time I find myself switching to any other flamethrower is on super choky maps like Dust Bowl, where I'd be more effective protecting my team for projectile spam, but I typically don't play on those maps in the first place. Hopefully, I've convinced some of you to consider trying the Dragon's Fury for yourself. It's not the type of weapon that you can just pick up and immediately be effective with. You really need to stick with it before you can start seeing results. I'd say it took me about a month of using the Dragon's Fury full-time before I started performing better than with the other flamethrowers. But I promise that learning how to use this weapon is worth the time investment. It can rack up kills like nothing else. As always, thank you for watching. And for the first time, special thank you to my patrons. See you all in the next video.